All right, in this lesson we're dealing with conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that another event has already occurred. Now that sounds complicated, but it's actually not very complicated. Picture a deck of cards. If you say take out an ace of spades, okay, I'm going to try and draw a spade here. The spade looks like this, right? If you draw the ace of spades and you hold that in your hand, and someone else reaches into the card, what is the probability that they will pull out another ace of spades? Well, it's zero, because these are dependent events, events whose outcomes occur, uh, are affected by the other. They have, one affects the other. Okay, so this is where conditional probability comes into play, when one event will affect the probability that it can happen again. Okay? So event A and event B are dependent events if the outcome of event A influences the outcome of event B. The probability that all of the set of dependent events will occur is the product of their separate probabilities. So here we have a formula which is actually much simpler than it's, it, uh, it seems. Okay, first of all, the multiplication means we want both these things to happen. Okay, and this funny notation here just means that B, this is, so this is the probability of B occurring after A has occurred. Okay, so let's look at an example to see that that's actually not very complicated. A computer manufacturer knows that in a box of 100 chips, three are defective. So out of 100, three are defective. So the probability of defective would be three out of 100. Okay, and the question here says, if Jocelyn draws two chips at random from a box of 100 chips, what is the probability that Jocelyn will draw two defective chips? So we're looking for the probability of defective and defective. We want both things to happen. Okay, this is like this, probability of A and B. If you want to call this A, you want to call this B. Well, how do we do this? Well, we. what is the probability of A? What is the probability that first one you pull is a defective chip? That's 3 out of 100. Okay, and so we're going to multiply. Now, what's the probability that the second chip will be defective. Well, this is where it's a little bit tricky because it depends on what happened in A. So assuming that, you know, that, that A is 3 out of 100, what's the probability that the second one will still be defective? Well, now it's only 2 out of 99. Okay, because we're looking for when this does happen. So if I choose a defective chip the first time, what is the chance I will choose a second one? Okay, so we need the first one to happen. Okay, the first one has to happen, and then the second one happens. So if we want them both to be defective, we're assuming that they both happen when we actually do pull them out. Okay, so the probability that they will both occur, this is 6 out of 9,900. Uh, which we could simplify if you wanted to. You could also use a decimal. Um, don't worry too much about that. All right. Let's try the next one. So Nathan asks Riel to choose a number between 1 and 40 and then say one fact about the number. Riel says that the number he chose is a multiple of 4. Determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of 6. Okay. So let's do multiple a 4 here, and let's do a multiple of 6 here. So if we think about the multiples of 4, this would be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Okay, what are the multiples of 6? 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Now, remembering how these Venn diagrams work, some of these occur in both. So if you look at 36, 
it's both. Are there any others like that? Yeah, I can see 24 occurs in both circles, and I see that 12 occurs in both circles. All right, so now we've got a Venn diagram showing this. Okay, so what is the probability? And by the way, we could just do this from a Venn diagram. Determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of 6. So what is the probability of a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 6? Okay, looking at the picture, I can see it's 3 out of 40. Right? There are 3 that occur for both of them. All right. Okay, and so the other way to do that would be th what is the probability of a multiple of four and multiple of six? This is the probability of a multiple of four times the probability of a multiple of 6 given that it's a multiple of 4. So what's the multi what is the probability of a multiple of 4? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. yeah, there are 10. Probability of multiple of 4 is 10 out of 40 times, now what is the probability of 6 not including the multiples of 4? So this is going to be um, so how do we do this? The probability that it's a multiple of 6 given that it's a multiple of 4. Well, Let me remind you of this formula. The probability of multiple of 6 given multiple of 4 is um, the probability of 6 and 4 divided by the probability of that it's 4. Okay, now what is the probability that it is 6 and 4? Well, there's only 3 out of 40 there. And what is the probability of 4? It's 10 out of 40. Okay. So that gives me 3 out of 10. So that's what I'm going to put here. And if you cross multiply, this is 30 over 400, which is 3 over 40. Okay, so two ways to do that. Um, I kind of like just looking at the Venn diagram. Um, let's go back a little bit though. There is another way to read this question and we should maybe do this a second way. Okay, it says determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of six. This is implying that we have to be considering the multiples of 4. Okay, it implies multiple of 6 after it is a multiple of 4. Okay, so that would be, if we did it that way, if we looked at it that way, and I know that's confusing, it, the question would be a little different. Okay, so what would be the chances of it being a 6 if we're assuming that the numbers we're only considering are multiples of 4? There are only 10 of those. Okay, so how many of them are multiples of 6? If we did it this way, the probability of a multiple of 4 and multiple of 6. This is 3 out of 10. 
Okay, so if we're reading the question that we're assuming we're only dealing with the ones that are multiple of 4, okay, because it says determine the probability that the number is also a multiple of 6, then it would only be 3 out of 10. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, according to survey, 91% of Canadians own a cell phone. Of these people, 42% have a smartphone. Determine to the nearest percent the probability that any Canadian you met during the month in which the survey was conducted would have a smartphone. So what are we looking for here? The probability that you have a cell and that it is a smartphone. Okay, so what is the probability of having a cell phone? Well, that's 91%. So let's maybe write this out. How are we going to do this? This is probability of a cell times probability of a smartphone given that you have the cell phone. Okay, well, this is 0.91. And what is the probability that if you do have a smartphone, Oh, sorry, if you do have a cell, you're going to have a smartphone, that's 0.42. Okay, what are the chances of it being both? You get that. Or if you want to change it, 38.22%. Now, if I don't know this, if this helps you, let's look at a tree diagram for a second. Okay. Do you remember when we looked at just heads and tails and it had a 50% chance that it either happened or it didn't? Okay, well, let's look at this in terms of, first of all, if you have a cell phone. Okay, there's a 0.91% chance that you have a cell phone. And that means there's a 0 0.09 chance that you don't. Okay, now if you have a cell phone, there is a... 0.42% chance that it's a smartphone. That means it's a 0.58 chance that it's not smart. And we're not even caring about what's going on here. It doesn't give us that information. Okay? So what we're trying to do is figure out this scenario right here. That's what this is. If you have a cell phone and it's smart. Okay? Let's try and use that skill for this one. Why don't you pause this for a second and give it a shot, okay? So hopefully you started this way. Um, and the reason you do is because the chances of winning depend on whether it wins, uh, it, sorry, whether it's windy or not. Okay, so we're going to do the windy or calm first, and then from there we're going to figure out, well, if it is windy and if it's calm, what happens? If it's windy, Chance of winning on a windy day is 70% chance of win. That means it's a 0.3% chance to lose. On the calm days, what do you have? You have a 60% chance to win and a 40% chance to lose. Well, what are we asked to do here? What is the probability that Hillary's team will win? Well, where do we win? here or here. So we're considering either this or this. Okay, so the probability of winning equals the probability of windy and win or the probability of calm and win. Okay, what's the probability that it's going to be windy? 0.4. And, remember, and means multiply. What's the chance that you're going to win? 0.7. Or, probability that it's calm is 0.6. Okay. Pen's not working here for a second, so just give me a minute while I try to get it to work. It's 
So calm is 0.6, and if you if you if it's, if it's sorry if it's calm, then their chances of winning is 0 0.6. So this is 0.28 plus 0.36 means our chance of winning is 0.54. Sorry, 0.64 or 64% chance. Okay, now that's certainly a difficult assignment. Um, this is not the easiest homework to do. Try to use diagrams. Try to use any of the strategies you've seen to try to make sense of it. Let's do your best, and then we'll take the questions up in class that you're not sure about. Okay? By the way, check the summary here. Some of those things might help you a little bit. Okay? Good luck with the homework.